His face was shallow and dirty. His skin like leather. Shirts were blood. While Derek stood in all his smugness, flashing his pearly whites, Jeff shook his head and pushed his way toward the dance floor. Carmen turned on her stool toward the bar. She tapped the glass before swallowing it in one go. What's your guess? Derek turned her stool until she faced him. With a finger under her chin, he lifted her head and planted a long, wet, telling kiss. His expert tongue possessed her mouth with promise and confidence. Her traitorous body slid off the stool and brought her to her feet. Fingers with a mind of their own snaked through his hair. Her hips pushed into his prominent erection. Carmen felt a tap on her shoulder. Without breaking from the kiss, she waved the irritant away. Betty Boop crossed with a nerdy cowgirl, Beckett said. Fuck. She broke from the kiss, but hesitated, breathing in Derek's beer-flavored hot breath against her swollen lips. Holy fuck, she needed him inside her. She straightened and turned on her heel. Beckett wore his usual letterman jacket and the copious amounts of moose in his blonde hair. That's the first part. Now you have to get the question. Let's get to it then. First female cartoon character not to show interest in any of the male characters. Frowning, Beckett's shoulders slumped. Carmen couldn't keep from smiling. As she opened her mouth to tell him to fuck off, his eyes lit up. Wilma Flintstone. She was married to Fred, you dumbass. I know lots of people who have no interest in their significant other. She dropped her head, knocking her glasses off her nose and clear to the floor. With her back to Derek, she slowly knelt, making sure her dress slid nearly to her waist. On her hands and knees, she faked blindness as she patted the dirty hardwood floor for her glasses. Her ass in the air, her panties hopefully only visible to Derek and he wouldn't be able to miss the pink slip of paper tucked under the lace of her thong. Derek lowered himself behind Carmen. Let me help you, babe. He reached over and grabbed her glasses, while his other calloused hand caressed her ass cheek before finding her slit. And when his fingertips probed her opening, she arched her back and grinned, baring teeth like a damned tomcat in heat. Carmen clenched her teeth and held her position until she felt the slip of paper being slid from her panties. She stood. He brought the paper to his face and breathed it in. And for the grand prize, the correct answer is... Velma. Jesus. Still sitting on the floor, Amy palmed her head. Cinder. Jesus. Cinder. Jesus. I am Cinder. Yes, you are. She glanced at the cracked mirror, but the grotesque image had vanished. Cinder waved his hands around her, as if outlining an invisible silhouette. Something dire has shifted your karmic emanations. Even as I stood at my post outside this edifice, The vibes beckoned my immediate attention. A monster. With a shaky finger, she pointed. In that mirror. Indeed. Cinder took her hand and helped her to her feet. His hand felt... cold. Very cold. Unnaturally cold. She clapped a hand over her gaped mouth. Dear Lord... You aren't from here, are you? From beyond the starry plains I hail. A vampire? Absolutely not. What are you? Where are you from? A place you know not of. 
a colorful and icy planet that dwells on a distant plain. He bowed at the waist. I am Sagarian. For decades, strange stories had existed about Buckeye. Stories that would have made Robert Ripley ecstatic. Like the Chupacabra, ancient aliens, and the Mothman. Some were believers, and others, skeptics. For Amy, Cinder was all those years of speculation come to a certainty. Maybe Buckeye really was a hotspot for a fantastic phenomenon. So many questions should have been on her mind, but only one made it out of her mouth. Why are you here? A war is to manifest in this town. I arrived early to get a grand spectator's view. War? In Buckeye? You came to help us fight? Absolutely not. My kind do not partake in cosmic politics. Life and love are our shelter and weapon. I come, as I said, to watch the performers. You come to watch, as if war is some kind of television miniseries? That, milady, is a grossly inaccurate presumption. This war will be much more marvelous than any magic television can cast. Cinder bent at the waist and turned to leave. Where are you going? The night is still young, and the wine calls forth my name. May your karma be realigned by dawn. While Derek's gray eyes stared down at her, she recalled the last time they fucked. Willie Nelson's blue eyes crying in the rain played on the jukebox. The feel of his lips trailing kisses down her abdomen. Her inner thighs. The tender suckling of her clit. Carmen grabbed the bottle of beer from his hand. She held it high and tipped her hat so she could see him. Here's to Velma. You want me, and I want you. No games. Not tonight. What's the matter? You got the question right. Because you gave me the answer. She looked over Derek's shoulder toward the restroom. Was Amy bathing in the damn sink? Derek leaned down, his lips close to hers. This may be a dance floor, and we may be dancing, but I don't dance. Not for anyone. Not even you. With a beer bottle in one hand, she pushed at his shoulder with the other. Fuck you. His body stilled as his hand gripped her face. We're fucking tonight, but not because I know shit about Velma. Amy hurried from the restroom. A poster of a western-style goth band plastered the hall a local band called the Undead Revolvers. Amy smiled and wondered if they were uncanny supernaturals too. How many eccentric people had she met in her life who weren't even from this world? Leaning against the wall, she concentrated on clearing her mind. But what of that creepy monster in the mirror? The voice in her head she really was losing her mind. Good grief. But that mirror was cracked. No denying that. Not only had she met some sort of alien, but he had warned, or rather raved, about an interstellar war. A war claiming Buckeye, Texas as ground zero. Nobody would believe her, and she wouldn't blame them one bit. Hell, she hardly believed it herself. And what of the attack? Should she file a complaint? What would Shane do if he found out? He would kill Chris. She pictured Shane nude and in a Mexican jail. The man had no qualms about doing stupid things because of some miscalibrated moral compass. It was better she not tell anyone about the almost rape. And Cinder had implied it was all happening because of her karma being out of whack. Was he saying that she deserved it? Had her screwed up karma directed Chris into the ladies room? 
She shook her head. Chris was an ass, and karma was not to blame. But what had thrown her karma so far off killed her? So much for clearing her mind. Amy pushed off the wall and through the crowd of nearly naked bodies. She beelined for the bar, where she intended to drink, as if tonight marked the eve of the end of the world. Out loud, she laughed. If Cinder was right, then it might actually be the final countdown. The eve of World War III. Screw beer. Time for the hard stuff. Amy sat on a stool and plopped her purse on the bar top. Mike approached and set a glass of iced tea down. Amy slid the beverage to the side. Jack and diet, and keep them coming. Heart racing, abdomen clenched, Carmen drew a slow breath. With her body melted against his, barely moving on the dance floor, she forced a smile. How's Susan? I said dick about Jeff, so why are you giving me shit? If you recall, that night I didn't answer the question correctly, so I made other arrangements. When they met two years ago, Carmen had made it clear she wasn't the settling down type. Derek had done the same. She fucked who she wanted, and so did he. So why was she giving him shit? She struggled for a quip and clever rebuke, but her mind was frustratingly blank. Derek's tight lips stretched into a smile. He kissed her forehead. If it makes you feel better, I had to pull over halfway home so she could puke. I dropped her off at her house and spent the rest of the night on my couch watching the Discovery Channel, being shark week and all. Thank fuck. Carmen resisted the urge to jump into his arms, wrap her legs around his waist, and squeal like a schoolgirl with a celebrity crush. Disgusted by her pathetic urge, she'd simply play it cool. Carmen sipped the beer and tipped it to his mouth. When the amber liquid dripped down his chin, she rose to her tiptoes and licked it off his skin. Derek twirled Carmen and pulled her close. No games. He kissed her, long and slow. As their tongues played hide and seek, the smell of the beer and rum from their breaths mixed in white-hot passion. Moisture dripped down her inner thighs. There were good fucks, there were bad fucks, and there was Derek. He was the only man she slept with who not only respected her, but knew where he stood in her world. Derek knew she would never love him, not like a woman should love her man, but she also knew he'd never love her. They redefined friends with benefits. Let's get out of here. With an arm around her waist, he held her tight against him. With his other hand, he held the bottle of beer. Derek looked up at the stage where the mechanical bowl waited. I was gonna ride sick him tonight. He sipped his beer and looked down at her, eyes heavy with promise. But I can last a lot longer than eight seconds on you.